and put him in the garden of Can 
I did so Say And me me I am reforming, I am reserved. I did them feature so what they fear. Yet, she won't yet tell me. To me, Ben, I wouldn't cast that. I'm going to need you who you want. To me, Ben, I wouldn't cast that. Mark for Mark for you. I am reforming, I am reserved. I am featuring Yet she won't yet tell you. If it's in your me, you're saying me. I'm in your now, but you know. Me so me, but you be. Now me body data. Yeah, me you're saying me. I'm in your now, but you know. Me so me, but you be. I'm not
Your blood was shed and you told Nemu in what is entrusted to you. But you have 11. No? Therefore, young kind. Salvation, you know, and mommy, you know, you. And if you have been faithful in. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, I'm sure 12, no? 12, no? So, if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? We still have to go to the 11. Only say, sir, MK, uh, you know, one more, no. Okay, fine. So, if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? Question is, sir, what is the effect of being dishonest or faithful in what is entrusted to you? Yo, um, Osha 11, I was saying, na enti semwe ni awunyadia enti muno kura. Why? Na wote awunyadia pano it is a near maybe a while before a trial. Ye can create your way, you may win. As when for be brave, a far dear Ketwebi, Sanadia, where the monocrane, and the lateness. Lateness, I had a quick humor, and it will be off on Sanya Bonnet. But a no say who pa, Ocean Ketua, a woman, there's a dear Sapa, Sasenka, yet to me, your pants and Kayeni late, which men. That's what you for be brave. Send an answer here. You slot in a first line. You try na. With me flow, be cra. I'm watching the time. No jam. I'm paying for this. It's a bema. No nine ball. Get us one. You juni jam. Wow. No nine ball. Get us one. You juni jam. Oba sorry na. I drink panang krofwa for you. Aye. 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 I'm paying some money. I be bua. Me me me. I'm a time now, so I know. And it was said, Sir, would you know, pray a war at the kit to a more? Why are we again? And what did the end? Can no cra, and then why? And what did the end? Can see no ever show us, and I knew who could run it. Was it a whole dear pa? Any idea here? You know, which means, sir, sometimes, you know, God has some valuable treasure beer or person or demon. But, sir, or the demon, and I saw on fair mound, or better, or quite a wish, or say other people's near man or dear human was it in all kinds, sir. This world's mammon. If we are sitting here, we be a juma. Oh, what they are showing, sir. Oh, here, so ye. Now, by then, now, oh, nyam me too for no, no idea. A strong bopa, no, what they are showing, sir. Think of these things. A radio moye. Now, yet to me, I yet a juma a four. Now, ya can ya no, a timia shrein a wo a juma moon. Where we have the greatest challenges. There we also have the greatest opportunity to
to let Christ shine. May the Lord guide us and help us in this. Amen. Our first Bible reading is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 30, 15 to 20. Deuteronomy 30, 15 to 20. Let's hear the word of God. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, and to keep his commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing Jordan to enter and possess. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Here ends the reading. Our second Bible reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 to 9. And I, breathing, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food. For until now, you were not able to receive it. And even now, you are still not able. For you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? For when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? But ministries, ministers through whom you believe, and as the Lord gave you, to teach each other. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then, neither who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now, he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. This is the word of God.
Our third Bible reading for today is chosen from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 21 to 37. Matthew 5, 21 to 37. I read, You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the, camp, to the guard, and you'll be put in prison. Truly, I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery, but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it's better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away, for it's better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, we have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all. Either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his foot too, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say be sim simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. This is the word of God. Peace be unto you all. This morning, we are so blessed to have in our midst uh, a pastor from Assemblies of God. He has been a pastor for 46 years, but now retired, and he was at Faith Assemblies of God for 42 years. And he has been the past general treasurer of the Assemblies of God, Ghana. And he is currently a lecturer at the Assemblies of God Seminary. Papa is blessed with five children. And this morning we are honored to have him here with his beautiful wife. Mama, please, can you give us a wave? And so this morning I pray that we will be able to tap all that Papa has from Assemblies of God, even as we keep um, glued to our seats and focused on God. And so we shall sing the hymn of meditation from PH 765. We sing the first three stanzas. Okay, sorry. His name is Reverend Professor Paul Dapa.
Good morning, church. I believe it's a privilege to be here at this time. This is my second time of coming here. About two or three years ago, I came here for the same program. And today the Lord has brought me again. So I'm very happy to be here. Today, our theme is about the word of God and the hope it can give to you. The word of God, the hope for mankind, the hope for the world. That's what we're going to talk about. Let me read from Hebrews chapter 4, chapter 4, verses 12. Hebrews chapter 4. And I read, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two air source, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and joints and marrow, and is the designer of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Amen. <clears throat> In Psalm 50, the psalmist also says something that I would like to read. Psalm 50. I'm reading from verse 5. Psalm 50. Gather my saints together for, to me, those who have made a covenant with me by a sacrifice. Let the heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against you. I am God your God. Will I not I will not rebuke you for your sacrifice or your burnt offerings which you continually bef before me? I will not take a bull from your house, nor goats out of your folds, for every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle on the field, on the thousand hills. I know all the birds of the, of the mountains, and the wild beasts of the field are mine. Verse 12 says, if I were hungry, I would not tell you. For the world is mine, and all its fullness. I will, will I eat the flesh of bulls, or drink the blood of goats? Offer to me thanksgiving, and pay your vows to me, or to the Most High. Call on me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. Amen. Now, Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we praise you and honor you for the privilege you give given to us to be here at this time to serve you, to worship you, and also listen to your word. Speak to us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. My emphasis is going to be on what the Lord wants us to know about him. And we can only discover this from the word of God. And so the theme says that the word of God is the hope for the world. If you have listened closely, all the scripture that was read, you hear that or you can see that God is this morning trying to draw our attention to his word and what it can do for us. You know, God is the God who made the universe. The Bible says that he spoke and all things came into being. He is a God that there's no other God like him. And so, after creating everything, he made man. He came down from heaven and took the dust of the earth and made man. He tried his best to have the solid fellowship or relationship with man. But because of sin, that relationship broke. But God have tried all his best to bring us to himself. Hallelujah. He wants us to be his friend. He wants us to be his children. 
And so there are some things that God wants us to know about him. And you can only discover this from the Bible. And when you discover this, I tell you, if you are despair, that hopelessness will disappear. Hallelujah. It will disappear. God will give you a new hope. And what does God want us to know about him as his people? Number one. God wants us to know that or to know that he's a righteous God. He wants us to know about his righteousness, about his holiness. And so, if you want to live a life that God can be your friend, friends, the first thing you must know is that that man is a righteous man. You can't be a friend of God and live your life anyhow. No. Only the righteous will make it to heaven. You see, the good news is that God is not coming to take any member from any church. I belong to the service of God. He's not coming for the service of God members. He's not coming from the Presbyterian members. No. He's coming for those who have been washed by the blood of Jesus and are possessed with the Holy Spirit. So it doesn't matter wherever you are, whether you're in the service of God, whether you're in Presby, whether you're in Methodist, whatever, wherever you are, if you have been washed by the blood of Christ and you have discovered God's righteousness, your name is written in the book of life. Say amen. amen. Which means that we belong to him. That's why he said, call to me those who have made a sacrifice with me, a covenant with me through my sacrifices. Have you made a covenant with him? How did it happen? The day we confess our sins that the Lord Jesus, the day we lift up our eyes to see heaven and say, God, I have sinned against you. Forgive me. That the, the Bible says, God forgave you. That is good news. Good news that the sinner like me, like you, we didn't know where to go. And we lifted up our eyes to heaven and said, God, forgive me a sinner. The Bible says, he forgave us and cleansed us from all unrighteousness. The cleansing of God through the blood of Jesus made us righteous. And the good news is that when anyone confessed Christ and believed that he died for his sins, the Holy Spirit instantly possesses that person. Wow. And when the Holy Spirit possesses you, you know what happened? You become a new creation. You begin to taste the righteousness of God. You begin to taste a change in your life. Those around you will see that this man is different. It's only, the, only God that can change your life. I used to have an uncle. He was a drunkard. I mean... <laughs> I don't know how to des describe his drunkenness. If you can drink more than that uncle, the police will arrest you. <laughs> he was always drunk. Booze to the highest level. Sometimes you do things, if I tell you, you will not believe it. He could even go, in those days when we, you know, we went to the toilet on the, that booze, the, the old time, do you remember those days where the latter man would go and pull it and then that be somewhere for us. My uncle would go and pull it and use the feces to, to bath. And then this man got the message of the gospel. And he changed. Everyone who comes from the choir knows this man. He's a very popular man called Akasanoma. He changed. And his life became new. He stopped drinking. He started going to church. In the morning, he would pick up his Bible and preach the gospel. Who can do this? Only God. It's when you, you are hopeless. You don't know what to do. And you discover the word of God where it advises you to come to God, to come to Jesus, that you can experience such a life. He changed. One time he was preaching and said, hey, if you don't believe the Bible, look to my life. You know me, a drunkard. So I'm saying that God wants us to discover that he's a righteous God. You are privileged that you have been called to be part of God's kingdom. Do you think it's by chance that you're a member of this church? It is designed by God himself. Say amen. And so God wants you to be here so that you hear the kinds of things your leaders will tell you from the word. So that if you're hopeless, if you're despair, God will give you new hope. God will give you new directions. God will change your tokens. Secondly, not only become righteous, the second thing God also wants us to know is that he wants us to know about his resources. His resources. He owns the, the whole world. The Sabbath says that the birds and the hills of the mountain hills, they are 
are mine. He says, all the cattle and the bulls in the forest, they are mine. And I know them all. I feed them all. He said, will I come to you if I need food? No. Because even you, you belong to me. If we, we understand that, God owns all things. And you are his child. Your attitude will change. Your talkings will change. You know, even if you have a friend of a big man who is, has a good position, can't you know he can change your destiny? He can fix your church somewhere. He can change your destiny. So, let's say if, if the president is your friend, very close friend, what can we do for you? Last week I was at the, I was at the Jubilee House. My son, my daughter was among the high court judges who were sworn in. I feel very proud. When the president shook my hand, I said, Reverend, <laughs> congratulations. Big man. Supposing he was my friend. Even I was so proud that he, you know, called my daughter's name and then made him a judge, a high court judge in Ghana. I was so proud. I was so proud. I put the picture in our Facebook and it went everywhere. So since last year, I've been walking like this. I've been walking like this. Me and my wife, we have been walking like this. Our talking changed. What I'm trying to, I'm trying to say that if the big man is your friend, he can change your walking. He can change your destiny. And so let's know that all things belong to God. And so what is your fear? What is causing you to be so disappointed in life? Whereas the man who made the universe is the one who has called you to be his child. You are his child. Say amen. Because say, as many as believe him, he gave them the right, the power to become his children. And you have that right. And if you're a child of God, what then are you afraid of? You call upon his name and you answer. Hallelujah. You answer. And so you must understand that God owns all things. He's your father. He owns all things. Whatever you ask him in his name, he will do it. When he says he's going to bring glory to his name, he will do it. So sometimes Christians will cry, 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 as if we don't have a God, as if our God doesn't have power. He has the power. He has the power. He speaks. Hallelujah. And thirdly, he wants us to know about his responses or his response to our call. When you call upon him, he will answer. He said, call upon me and I will answer you and show you or tell you great and mighty things that you do not know. This is a privilege. It's only we, the Christians, that we can talk to God. We can command him in the name of Jesus. Can, which of the angels can command God do this? They don't have that right. God will call them, Michael, yes sir. Go to Yamensa and do this for me. Yes sir, he's doing it. But you, you raise up your hand and say, Father, in the name of Jesus. I command that this will happen. And it happens. What a privilege. Call on him. If you don't know what to do, tell him. Call him. He speaks. Yesterday, I was going to a, a funeral ceremony. On my way, my wife called me and said, I can't find my car keys. She was also supposed to go to another funeral. We divided ourselves. She says, we divided himself into twice. <laughs> the whole time I saw him. <laughs> we divided ourselves into twice. So she was going here, I was going here. And the only way she called, I can't find my car keys. I said, Oh, it's there. I've not seen it. The sister search. On the way I called, have you found it? No. Oh, found it? No. Then I said, God, where are these keys? Oh, tell me where the key is. The key is. Oh, the key, the key, he has dropped the key. Instantly I heard, it's under the chair. The big one. So I called. I said, that big chair, if you can't pull it, call Stella to help you. It's under it. She pulled it. It was there. Maybe she thought I put it there. No, I didn't put it there. <laughs> I'm trying to say, he responds. Instantly, God spoke that it's under the chair. So I called her. I said, look at the chair. Under the chair, it's there. She just pulled it. It was there. So whatever you tell him, he will do it. What is your problem? The word of God is our hope. Say amen. amen. When we don't know what to do, 
we have a God who has ears. He can listen. He can hear. He speaks. He made us in his image. And so God speaks. So he has a mouth. He said, the, the earth is my footstool. So he has legs. Is that also? Heaven is my dwelling place. He has both us. That's an idea. Also, I'm showing another time. Only two. Only two. He said, my hands are not sure that I cannot see. No, they're very. Answer. My ears is He has ears. And so when we call, he hears. He responds. He responds. What about you tell him, if he knows it will make you happy and bring honor to him, he will answer. Hallelujah. And so let us understand that we have a God who is alive. Whatever we ask him, if it will bring glory to him, he will do it. Sometimes we think he doesn't hear. We pray, 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 pray. But he does it at his right time, his own time. Don't worry. Whatever happens, you do it. Once he knows he's going to help you, he's going to bring honor to his name, he will do it. He will do it. And when he does it, you know that it will open doors for you. It will give a lot of privileges. Because he's the one, when you call, he responds. He responds. He's able to do everything for you. One time I was coming from London, and then I have three big bags. Oh, wow, I will never forget that day. And then the, I was supposed to pay for one bag. And I was going to pay, but the queue was too long. I said, okay, let me queue and then get my boarding pass. Then after that, I'll go and pay for the SS. And as I was just doing that, a man came and stood by my side. And then looked through the line. And came straight to me and said, sir, are you going to Ghana? I said, yes. Then follow me. So I followed this gentleman. He took me to where they check in for the business in the first class. Maybe I was I had dressed so nice. I don't know. But I'm telling you, <laughs> it's the grace of God. God is always ready to help us. And so he whispered to that lady. And the lady took my passport and then says, sir, we have a special package for you this morning. Wow. I said, wow, what is it? So we are going to put you in the first class. I said, huh? First class, wow. I've never traveled the first class. Always I go with the economy. Have you been there, the economy, where your legs are <laughs> straight to the economy? So that's where my level can take you. Okay. Then he, she jokingly said that, the, there anything you need, we'll give it to you, but you won't give you food. And also Joe Clay said that, oh, don't worry, I'm fasting. Anytime I'm fasting, I really eat a lot. So today, I'm going to eat a lot. So we just passed that joke. And I got to the first class. I was shocked. Wow. I didn't know some the planes and part are like that too. Because those of us, the economy people, you know, we are packed. Big seat. I sat there, and then a lady came Immediately I sat down, he came. Sir, this is first class. Have you traveled the first class before? I didn't say no. I said, not really. <laughs> and then she said, she said, oh, okay, anything we need here, we'll give to you. After talking, she said, is there something we can give to you now? I said, oh, yes, you can give me a cup of milk and two chicken ties. The ties were two chickens <laughs> and some biscuits. Instantly, it was saved. Wow, what am I trying to say? I'm saying that we are privileged people. We are the people that when we ask God to do something, he does it. And so his favor is on us. That is you. That day, it was very interesting. And then when it came to serving the food, special plate, right, cutlery right, arranged. Oh, and everything was so perfect. I said, hey, the plane, let me to see. The person inside the room, oh, then I was looking, I said, wow. And then after I finished eating, she came back and said, if you want to sleep, eh, this chair you are sitting on is a bed. Do you know how to pray, pray it? I said, don't really. <laughs> after my not really, I didn't leave it, you know. <laughs> and then she said, okay, if you want to sleep, call me. And then when I wanted to sleep, I called. She came and then said, okay, stand aside. Pick up something like a remote control. And then the chair me like this. It became a bed. I said, hey. <laughs> I just am good to 
and I slept until when they say, it's, we are now about to land in Accra. Wake up. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that we are privileged people. We are privileged people. When you come to God, favor follows you. His favor follows you. And the favor is the one that will cause you to call upon him and to come after him. Hallelujah. Amen. Lastly, he also wants us to know what he can do. What he can do. What can't he do? Even the universe, he spoke. Let there be this, it was there. Let there be that, it was there. What a God will say. He said, when I was making things and the angels, my sons were rejoicing, the angels were rejoicing. Job, where were you? God is a powerful God. There's nothing that he cannot do. If Lazarus died for four days, he came back to life. Peter at the beautiful gate says, silver and gold I don't have. Such as I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Instantly he did it. Do you know you can also do the same? Hallelujah. What a privileged people. And if you discover this from the word of God, it will take away your hopeless life. Your life will change. One time I had a big invitation to go to Czech Republic to do a crusade. In fact, the, our headquarters, Springfield, our Vatican, <laughs> let me put that way, in America, the Czech Republic superintendent called there and said he needs an African, a son of God African, who has power ministry, power gift. And so, get us one. And they called to Togo, where we have our big university, the seminary. And I'm a lecturer there, they don't know me. And so, let's send Paul. So they called me, will you go? I said, oh, yes. Then I need to be there because one be there. Czech Republic, take it, put everything free. Prr, I landed. Big to see, not very big, but okay. okay. But the part that we had that crusade, there were so many people, thousands of people, but they were not there for the crusade. It was summer holiday. So, you know, when these guys are in summer holiday, you know the kind of dress they wear. Some of them almost naked. And so we started, I started preaching. And they didn't seem to bother what I was saying. Only few that were there. But the speakers were huge. But I was telling them that, hey, we have a God. I've come here with a God who can do all things. He is ready to help you. And they were, because of the nature of the crusade, the brain were there, cripples were there. I said, look, he will open your brain eye today. Those of you in cripples will rise up and walk today. And after saying all these things, it started attracting their attention. And so when I finished preaching, and I prayed, and I said, hey, those of you who cannot see, look at me, you can see me now. A young lady ran to the altar and picked up the microphone from the interpreter. She was screaming, and the way she was screaming, the more those unconcerned people were coming closer to be concerned. And they were coming, and the place was packed, and I didn't know what was happening, so I thought maybe the eye, because she was pointing the hand to the right eye, so I thought maybe the eye was opened. And she was talking and pointing the hand to the eye, the hand to the right eye, and then so I was standing watching. Then it was a sir, Reverend, this young lady is saying that the right eye had been blind for the past six years. And she wants you to pray now for the eye to be opened. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Hallelujah. What a challenge. And when because you said, let me pray for me now. Maybe she was trying to test God because of the way I was talking. That if your eyes cannot see, you see today. If you can't walk, you walk today. Because the God we are serving, He can do all things. Say Amen. amen. He can do all things. As I say, young lady.
In Jesus' name, turn around and go away. And the dog turned. What a, oh, wow. Do you know what you have? I love that old lady's testimony. Stop! As if the dog has ABC, a automatic brake system. Stopped immediately. What stopped it? His words, his power. Believing God can do all things. And that is you. And so don't demean yourself to think that uh, sometimes we just sing Jogu Abrehuni. We demean some to console ourselves. Please change your talking, change your attitude. Begin to see yourself as someone who belongs to heaven. Say amen. amen. And know what God can do for you. And when you begin to know yourself and know what you can do, nothing can overtake you. Satan will be afraid of you. Even if you are sick, God has the power to heal you. Sometimes you go to a hospital. Even when God is not, you are not getting divine healing, God can use doctors to heal you. Do you believe this? Sometimes it is too late, but doctors will handle you. It is the doctors. It is God doing his work. And so wake up and believe in the word of God. If you believe what the Bible tells us, knowing that all our hopes all is, is in the Bible, the hopelessness, the, the situations that we don't know what to do, the answer is in the Bible. May the Lord bless you this morning. May he answer your prayer. May he open your eyes to see who you are. Be blessed. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. Let's stand and let me bless you before I sit down. the salvation that God gives freely to mankind. Just say this after me if you know you don't have Christ. And after the service, please do your best to see the leaders of this church. And God will bless you. Say, Heavenly Father, today I come to you as a sinner. Forgive all my sins and wash me by the blood of Jesus so that I can lead a righteous life. God, today I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I commit your servants to your hand. I praise them in, your, in the throne of grace. That Lord, this morning, you shower your presence upon the members of this church. Lord, bless them. God, bless them. In the name of Jesus, help them to discover that your word is the answer to every problem they are facing. Help them to know that they belong to you. God, in the name of Jesus, every obstacle, tribulations, persecution they are going through today, in the name of Jesus, we dismantle it. And pray that, Lord, you take control over their lives and bless them, God. Give them new vision to see who they are. In the name of Jesus, I pray, even if someone is sick over here, I command the sickness to free now in Jesus' name. Receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus. God bless your church. Bless your church. Bless your church. Amen. Bless your church. Amen. Bless your members. Amen. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. 
for blessing your servants. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Maybe you can sit down. Whom do you believe? And a Bible Society Sunday. A Bible Sunday in Tia Senka offering a year twice, but time in Tia Bessian once. The same thing, you know, for the church until one a year normal offering, one year project. Now, and and then also a Bible Society. Normal Sunday offering on a project. I was here for a minute. Nanka de Ay and Sessedi have a corner back on a me no no, the Siano. I have for the church, whether project and I are there for the church. Now, in fin fin, no, I have for Bible uh, study Sunday, no. Patriot, I said, Bible society, then it's in fin fin, no. Now, side, no, I have for the church, whether project or the normal offering, here for the church. Patriot, I said. Minha tete ma apime, na mano suye apime, anka mi di be ma mi niso, leji minha mi di na ye, na mi di. Na mi di ye ye, na mi di, a jem jem aka, na wa wa ne ne ne, alleluia. Minha tete ma apime, na mano suye apime, anka mi di be ma mi ni su, meji minha mi di na ye, na mi di a ye de ma ka, a wa wa di no e ni, na mi di a ye ye, a ye ye ma ka, a wa wa di no e ni, se minha. Tell me not such a man happy man. Now my new so yeah happy man. I got me deep and my me need to. Yeah yeah, I yeah yeah my God. I want to know you. I yeah yeah. Semi nya, semi nya, 
Let's have my happy man. I'm a new so yeah, happy man. I can't believe that my is so. And you mean I'm meeting, yeah. I'm If I have me, no, whoa, 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 whoa,
this morning in this church, Father, use it for your glory. Let all of us experience the blessing of you so that, Father, anytime we come to church, we can give to your glory. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's listen to today's announcement. Session welcomes all to today's divine service, especially those worshiping with us for the first time. It is our prayer that the good Lord will continue to guide and protect us. Amen. I'm still reminding the church about the moderators club handbrake that we should donate to the, our television. The short code is star three six five star one eight two eight hash star three six five star one eight two eight hash all network. Next week, nineteen February twenty twenty three, is introduction service for Reverend Francis Fiahino and his family. We are appealing to church members to show our love to our pastor. The Church and Economical and Social Relations Committee presents the Taste of Marriage on this Valentine's Day, Tuesday, 14 February 2023. The time is 5.30 p.m. at this auditorium. The speaker is Councillor Joe Kwabna Cranton. It is a church program, so we are expecting all church members to be here. Come with your wife, your husband, your loved ones, to come and celebrate the Valentine in this room. We want to celebrate the Valentine with you. So Tuesday, 5.30 p.m., we are expecting all church members right here in this auditorium to celebrate the Valentine with you. Every last Friday of the month before Communion Sunday is for fasting and prayers and also for preparation service. So we should take note and then prepare accordingly. Members who are on the church program for Sunday services should see the agents anytime their names are mentioned for the following Sunday's program. The Dockers Kunadu Entry Ministries present Pakat Adona experiencing the visitation of God through our worship. And it is today the program will take place right here in our auditorium, 4 p.m., 4 p.m. Ash Wednesday service comes off on 22nd February 2023. The time is 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. This service marks the beginning of Lent, which is 40 days of fasting and prayers. The church wants all members to be part of this event. The timetable for weddings and funerals for the church is on the notice board. 
members who have funerals and weddings should check so that they can pick a date for a wedding or funeral. The session is informing members that 5th March 2023 will be the Sunday when all past committee members will be honored. Please, past committee members, prepare for this day. Bible studies facilitators are calling on members who are interested in leading the Bible Sunday Bible studies to join. You can see Mr. Paul Dupaku or Dr. Nimakobuati. Now, if you don't know them, you can see me. The free will offering boxes are placed at the entrance of the church. Members can donate today and throughout the week. Free will cement donation is still ongoing. Members can still donate and those who have promised but have not redeemed DS are reminded to do so. Ramsey and Sempa comes on your radio every Wednesday morning, 5.30 a.m. to 6 a.m. on 92.1 megahertz Garden City Radio. Members are to listen to it. Um, our medical screening, we've got the number, but uh, about 25 people have fully paid. We want everybody to pay so that we call the doctors and we'll give you a date. If, every, if everyone has not paid and the doctors come and they perform everything and they go, those who have not paid, we cannot chase you for the money. So now we have about 25 to 30 who have fully paid. So those who have brought their names but you've not paid, please do well to pay. Those who have given your money with, to me, your receipts are with me. So after check, see me and collect it. Please, if you pay, make sure you take your receipt. All groups will be meeting this week. Men's, we are meeting tomorrow, 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. YPG, you have a special program on Thursday, 16 February, at 5 p.m. Please, the theme is Love Catch. Uh, it's a personal discussion with uh, Reverend and Mrs. Francis Fiahino. So please come, YPG, come and enjoy this particular meeting. And because of this, you are meeting. We are meeting all YPG members after service at the Reverend G.A. Kufuor Hall. ICT committee will meet after service. They will meet Papa Utu at the Reverend G.A. Kufuor Hall. Please, scholarship committee is still knocking our doors that individuals who want to help the scholarship committee can do so. You can see Mrs. Lucia Hinkra or go to the church office and any money you want to pay, you can give it to them. Take a receipt. It will be given to the scholarship committee. We take this opportunity to also tell the church that we are helping church members through apprenticeship and education. So if you have somebody that you need help, please come. There will be a lot of investigation. Not that when you can, we just give it to you. We want to give to those who are in dire need and the church wants to help them. Tomorrow, Monday, Monday morning prayers will continue on 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. And then long time with Jesus prayer that from Monday to Friday, 1, 12.30 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. also goes on here. You can come and come and pray. Service leaders for next week. First and second service preacher, Reverend Dr. Anochin Kansa. First service leader, Mr. Benjamin Osafwa Pia. Bible readers. First reading, Mr. Dominic Intriqua Ofori. Second reading, Dr. Richard Ousu Fie. Third reading, Professor John Fie. Intercessory prayer, Mr. Yao Minkambadu. Offertory prayer, Miss Emmanuel Emanuela Ousu Fie. Miss Emanuela Ousu Fie. Second service, second service leader. Mr. Emmanuel Ekuban, Bible readers. First reading, Mrs. Joyce Mensa. Second reading, Mr. Kofi Atakura. Third reading, Ms. Aaron Boache. Intercessory prayer, Mr. Joseph Udru Kranting. Offertory prayer, Mrs. Baida Asante. Attendance for last week, 878. Offertory VTU, 300. Harvest lunch. 37,843, 40 pesos. 
normal offering, 9,042, 50 pesos. Seed of faith, 770. Tithe, 38,466. Presbyters on duty. Mr. Felix Samoyao, Dr. Pama Amani, Dr. Nimako Boati. Funeral announcement. One week observation for the late Samuel Opuni Dompre, father of Mrs. Grace Danso, comes off on Friday, 17 February 2023, at Apia Dukokopin Station. Lay in state of, the, of a church member, late Madame Salome Chewa, and also a mother of Ophelia Jesse comes off on Saturday, 18 February 2023 at the church premises. Burial service will go, go on on this church from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. Final funeral rite will be at the Under Barracks St. Christopher's Catholic Church, 4 b.m. Kumasi, from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. Those to attend the funeral, singing band 8, Harmonics four, and any other group will give us two. The bus will leave here 1 p.m. The second funeral lay in state of the late opening Samuel Min Fosuminta, a church member, comes off on Saturday, 18 February 2023, at the family house Asafo, house number AA59, opposite Suite Alone, from 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. Burial service will be in this church, 8 a.m. Final funeral rite will be at the family house, Asafo, house number AA59, opposite suite alone. The funeral will take place from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. Those who are going for the first funeral, we will go for the second funeral. Health tip. Exercise at least. 75 minutes per week. Vigorous aerobic exercise such as running, walking, dancing, swimming, etc. help your body and improve your health. Please, if today is the first time you are worshiping with us, we want to know you better. And those who have funerals and the one we please come forward for us, let us pray for you. And then those who worship, Pastor say, any day can only ye if I show more money, where you know, so so mom rana in for Montrasa. No. So my reason is to worship with you. Actually, I'm from Accra and I came to work here. I'm a Presbyterian. I worship with Ebenezer Presbyterian Church, and I look to church to worship with you. But you are from our dance again, you mean one of our boss in your praise be. But your sister Grace in me, they prepare free. Yamia Duma, one week in the eighth year day, dear Nimia, appear to Cocobe. And now your sister Jesse, Ophelia Jesse. Emma, <laughs> Or how a man near, a yinin in a frequent, 
na bibia wie ya ye de waseda ma eradi eje anuani nso a abai su she won sa oba ye o run feel oni e besom e shire bi e o sum eradi fado mo dume bi o beti die bo asafo eradi mo mo ni she won de na asafo yi eni wunya ko pon mo awon nya me som eni se ye kai o be ye o yesu di no amen pacho mo hu papa ye ma ye wa si si this one And it's time for intercessory prayer. I want to pray for our nation, Ghana. As we've heard from today's sermon, that whatever we speak and we ask God, He's able to do it for us. We want to uh, close our eyes wherever we are and pray to God that He continues to intercede with the current economic hardship that the country is facing. That God will grant our leaders the wisdom and the needed direction so that the country will steer back to the right path. Please let's pray. Us continue to pray for our leaders that God will give them wisdom, God will be present in their meet wherever they are, that the Lord will drop ideas into their minds so that they be able to offer the country the services that they are supposed to. We also want to continue and pray for the sick amongst us and also the sick people in the various hospitals and also various homes that God should. Lift his mighty hand upon them, grant them healing. God continues to lift them from any afflictions that they may have. Let's pray for the sick. Last but not the least, I want to pray for Syria and Turkey. We've all heard of the earthquake that has happened in the country over the past week, that God should continue to help them in this time of their suffering, that the Lord should grant them hope, should continue to help the rescuers as they continue to search for people and under the rampage, that God should grant the country what they need this moment of stress. So, Father, we are grateful to you this morning for the opportunity given us to come before you for our prayer. Father, your word says that whenever two or three are gathered in your name, and that we believe you, dear Lord, will listen to us and grant us the desires of our hearts. Father, we committed these three things on our hearts to come before you with them. Lord, we prayed about them, and you know, and you listen to us, and you grant the request that we put before you. We thank you for answered prayer. Jesus. Amen. As we all know, this day, today is a Bible Society Day. Every church in Kumasi here, or maybe in Ghana, we are observing this day. And anytime we observe this day, we also invite people to be members of the society. And the Bible Society is a non denominational church or Christian organization where we try to come together to print or solicit for help from our, uh, from our members or members of the Christian community so that we can print more Bibles that can be distributed to Christians or the world as we hear this morning that if the world know that, if they know that the, the, the word of God is the one that will actually take our hopelessness in our lives, I believe the world will be saved. And so let's help today come together and be member of the society so that we can donate to print more Bibles so the Bible becomes very cheap, very affordable for all to be able to buy. So that wherever you go, you can see the Bible. You can find them and buy them at a very cheap cost. If the Bible is expensive, people will not buy. But the Bible is, <laughs> is the way to life, the way to heaven. Thank God that <laughs> We are going to heaven, so we want more people to go with us. So please, if we finish or after this service, we have some a form here. Some of them, you go to the back, you get a copy, fill it, and then you can be a one-time.
support it one time or can give you pledge to have it monthly or quarterly or halfly or yearly. Or you can give one time offering today to help print the Bibles. So we need your help. So please do your best to help us so that the work could be easier for the Bible Society. We can print more by print more Bibles for the church. These days, many people go to church, they don't have Bibles. And so they are using their phones, cell phones, as a Bible. I was watching when we were reading, some of us were looking to the cell cell phone. to get a Bible and put it your, on your table at the library. So your children will see that and say, that, what is this? It's a Bible. If you, if you want to use your phone as a Bible, people will not discover that there's a Bible. Let's help them to discover that our children even to discover that there's a Bible. So please, after the service, do your best to register as a member. Go and get a form. And then if you want to pledge to help us, God will bless you. Say amen. amen. God bless you. Hey, see the guy to go for it. And he has the forms that where the book stands. See him for it. And those who will be meeting Papa after service for the um, teaching service, it will come on. So Papa says 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. after afternoon service. I don't know if you're slow. Now I can send me. Anna, you have Papa Francis Fianu. You have a Juma Air Shannon, sir. Yes, sir. Mommy and me, children will do. And children are not in your face. Our closing hymn shall be taken from PH 583, the first two stanzas. Let's pray. Eternal God, we thank and praise your holy name for blessing us this morning through the Bible studies and through the preaching. We are trusting on your faithfulness, O God, that we can acknowledge you wherever we find ourselves. We pray that, Lord, you bless your servant, that you have used him to bless us. Any power that has gone out of him, we pray that, Lord, you yourself will fill him. Wherever he is not, Lord, he may become a blessing to people. We now to return to our various rooms. We pray that your presence will continue to be with us. Most especially this week, take hold of our lives, O oh God, and let us experience you in a special way. This is our prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the blessings of God, the Father Almighty, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.